So we're now going to apply what we know about the epidermis and those layers to talk about how skin grows. The epidermis layers are the part that grow um, and continually are regenerating. And then a little bit about repair, tissue repair. So first, this should be nothing new here. You've got these layers of the epidermis, right? So this whole shebang is the epidermis. And we've talked about these, the names of these strata, which are very, look very different, even though they're all stratified squamous epithelial cells, um, which are also called keratinocytes. So I'll write that just down here. Um, keratinocytes are the epithelial cells of the skin. And that's because they make keratin, that waterproof substance um, that is part of the protection of your skin. So I'm gonna start actually with the top layer and then we'll go to the bottom and come back up. So the kind of one of the goals um, is this stratum corneum is this very um, scaly, dead skin cells that are constantly um, falling off. So see, I'm gonna choose a different color for that. That they are, so a pink is gonna be kind of our, our direction of cell movement um, as growth occurs. So cells exfoliate off, sloth off, I like that's a word, um, fall off dead cells. And this is, you probably heard that dust is skin cells. There's a lot of skin cells in dust. So this is because the stratum corneum is made up of dead cells that are um, very scaly and full of keratin. They're keratinized. So let's go back to the bottom and look at how that happens. So at the very bottom layer here, that stratum basilae, we'll come back to that melanin later. Remember the very bottom layer here, single layer of cells. This is your basal layer. So these are called basal cells. Um, this layer contains stem cells that are going through mitosis. So stem cells are cells that are able to continue to divide and produce new cells even in a developed organism. So this happens in adulthood in um, most organisms. So these are continuing to divide. And that is unlike many of your cells, which are, um, have differentiated and no longer can divide. Once a cell differentiates, it is no longer able to go through mitosis is what this is called, right? Um, Okay, so those cells at the bottom, those basal cells are actually kind of cuboidal in shape. You'll notice that still called stratified squamous epithelium. These are going to divide. So let's say you have one cell right here and over time it divides into two. Well, where are those cells gonna go? Um, they have to go, the basal layer is a single layer. So they're, it's gonna push up at least one of those cells, one cell becomes two, it's gonna push up into the next layer. What is that next layer? The stratum spinosum. So this contains young cells that just divided um, from the stratum basale. Um, you can see the stratum spinosum is quite thick. So the cells up here are a little less young than they are down here. Um, they didn't all just divide, but they continue pushing up. I'll have a, kind of a little animation of this to show you in just a moment. So this is pushing up via cell division. Cell division is causing this. That is gonna continue to push up over time until this cells um, enter the stratum granulosum. 
the stratum granulosum is this dark layer right here, granules of keratin are being produced. So here cells produce a bunch of keratin. Keratin is a protein. And this is where you can actually kind of see it in granules. As they push up further, there's this lucidium layer that is kind of a different um, form of keratin that just looks clearer. Um, function of that, don't worry about. But that is kind of what that clear layer is, is due to the, the how keratin looks in that layer. Um, we continue to push up. I'll change that color in a moment until we get to the stratum corneum. In the stratum lucidium and the stratum corneum, cells start to lose their nuclei. So at this point, these dead cells, what I mean by that is they have lost their nuclei. They kind of pop out and all the other organelles. So they're no longer producing keratin. They can't without organelles, but they're full of this keratin protein, keratin fibers. And um, that's what makes this, this dead keratin filled cells are kind of scaly, scaly keratinocytes. Keratinized is another word for it. Um, and this layer is waterproof. Um, it was important for us becoming terrestrial to be able to, to live on a land, keep water in and out a lot better, um, less permeable. So those are the layers. I want to show you a video of this process um, of growth. It is a nice kind of animation and you won't be able to hear the sound of it. So I'll kind of talk through what's happening and a big, thing is, it's growth from the bottom, right? The growth is happening from the bottom. It's actually how grass grows as well. So cell division is happening at that bottom layer. Spotlight, yes, I do. So down here is where cells are dividing. As we go up, here nuclei are being lost. So now we've got, and this is what it'd be like now in a you know, developed organism, Dead cells falling off, keratinized, full of keratin, look kind of like scales. This down here would be the granular layer where it doesn't, isn't shown here that keratin is being produced, but somewhere down here where the cells still have nuclei, that keratin protein is being produced before they lose their nuclei. This would be the stratum spinosum. Some, I, mean, I can't tell exactly, right? But it's somewhere before um, somewhere down towards the bottom. And then this is our stratum base layer, that, that base layer, single layer. So I think it's a nice visual for understanding that growth process. Get back to my correct screen here. Okay, um, as a thought question, I would like you to think about with this continued growth that I've shown you, imagine you were gonna have a tattoo um, where would that have to penetrate to be permanent? So clearly this top layer from the base layer up is constantly regenerating. So we've got to get a tattoo needle down into that dermis. I'm not sure actually how deep down there, somewhere in the dermis, I actually got a little visual here. Um, the point here is that thinking about what needs to happen, for a tattoo to be permanent down below where that constant regeneration occurs. Otherwise that tattoo ink would be lost over time. Okay, learning check. Answer this question. And lastly, talked about the epithelial regeneration. I want to give you an example of where the layers, the dermis would also need to respond to injury in this case. Um, so in this case, this is a, a penetrating wound that causes a 
penetration in through the epidermis into the dermis. The first step of repair here is going to be inflammation. Sometimes we think of inflammation as bad, but it is an important part of healing. So this is an immune response. We have antibodies come from the bloodstream to um, combat potential bacteria and other invaders. And we've got blood clotting, right? Which is initiated and then is positive feedback helps to um, ensure its completion until the blood clot forms. So that's the first step. Then we've got regenerating epithelium, just like um, very similar to what I showed you in that video. We've also got dermal repair here. So this is this granulation tissue. There are fibroblasts here. So actually this is inflammation. This step is um, growth as part of repair. Fibroblasts, what do they do? They make fibers, make protein fibers. In the skin specifically, what fibers do they make? They make collagen. That's the primary fiber um, type, especially in that dense, irregular connective tissue. That's repairing that tissue down there. Epithelial cells dividing, of course. Then we've got permanent repair. The epithelium has regenerated completely, and this area is now fibrosed, meaning um, full of fibers. Those fibers are fairly parallel, so that's why a scar actually looks pretty different than the tissue that normally would be there. Um, it looks different than the dense, irregular connective tissue that is present in the skin. Um, and it was the fibroblasts that did that, that, that made that. Remember, blasts are the cells that produce fibers. Fibrocytes would be ones that, that maintain. So fibroblasts are um, um, stimulated by this injury. So that's one type of repair that needs to happen. Um, there's also other damage that can occur to the skin, right? So burns, and there's different degrees of burns that describe how many layers deep that burn went. Um, which is going to affect the amount of, of damage and consequence of that burn, whether it burns just the epidermis, the dermis, or even underlying muscle and bone, that's a bad burn. All right, 